What's up, Perry? This is Al, the sexiest coach you ever will have. Um, but uh, let's. Uh, this is Coach's Eye. Of course, you're familiar with this. You told me that you um, have looked at my videos before. You know that I'm very thorough, so um, I will explain some things. Hopefully, it won't be so redundant because you have seen other videos where I talk about giving one cue compared to giving a bunch of cues. But in this uh, particular video, I'm going to give you a bunch of cues in order for you to make sure that... Uh, uh, you know that we have a pathway that we're going to because the game plan is to write your program specifically for you in order to address your, uh, you said you have left-sided sciatica and pain in there. And then also, um, you know, uh, uh, I do notice some, some deficits and some compensatory actions that you have. I'll show you that later in the video. But again, let's, uh, let's look at your walkout because here is your walkout. And if you notice... It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. You had like six steps in there. Um, that is a little much when it comes to squatting. Uh, now, of course, you're not gonna, you're not really concerned about the amount of weight that you're using. But the, the thing is, the stronger I'm sure you know this. The stronger we are, the better that we are able to get a simulation for your muscles. The more simulation for your muscles, the bigger they get. The bigger they get, the more trophies you win for your bikini contest i believe is what you were saying uh no disrespect that's uh that's basically what i wanted to get into before um i had got into powerlifting just because powerlifting it seems to be a little bit more uh objective than subjective but i'm sure you know all that as well uh but uh yeah maybe one day i'll sport a banana hammock but anyways uh let's reduce the amount of steps that we are doing because uh, again once we start lifting up like 500 plus pounds um all those steps that you're taking and that's going to be really difficult and uh, a little bit taxing. Look at two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I was right, six steps. Um, that's a lot. So if we can reduce it to just two or three, that would be best. We would step with uh, just maybe one, two, and then maybe the third step would be just to rearrange it, to, uh, your, your, your stance width. Um, so now let's look at your bar path and your squat here. So I'll let this play. Um, not too bad. What I do notice is that you tend to be a little. Remember when I was talking to you during FaceTime? You said you. I said that uh, the video you sent me was low bar. The reason why I think it's low bar is because let's draw a line. So here's your um, the line from the bar, the middle of the bar to the middle of your your midfoot there. Um, so if we play it, you can see. You do okay following it. Now, the thing is, the bar path is not going to be exactly straight up and down just because of the amount of weight that you're using. Um, but, uh, yeah, the amount of weight will dictate the amount of um, uh, kind of forward lean that you have just because your ass has mass and it's going to uh, help kind of counterbalance the amount of weight here. So in order for you to make sure that your um, balance are not falling backwards, uh, you're, you have to have that weight going forward. That starts to disappear once we start going twice the uh, body weight um, squat, and uh, it'll start to look a little bit more uh, straighter. And uh, But the bar path that you have here is okay. It's decent. But what I want to point out is that your moment arm, because look at – all right. So we'll play this. You keep playing it. Because you, you – you do okay on some some reps. You do bad on some other reps. So right right here. That's where you're locked out, right? So the thing is, look at where your hips are, right? Your hips are uh, a little bit there. I a little ex exaggerated just for uh, kind of um, uh, demonstration purposes. But look at the moment arm here. Um, I'm not sure if you're a physics person, but the moment arm is basically... Uh, the perpendicular dis or yeah the perpendicular distance between the, the axis of rotation through the um, bar path or the line of force uh, the line of force being gravity uh, the perpendicular force meaning the distance between uh, your hips which is the rotation and um, so it's like holding let, let me draw you a little stick figure if you haven't taken if you haven't taken physics here is a uh, stick figure dude right if I have a weight here. That's not as difficult as if I had the weight out here holding outside. Like, you know, if you hold out a pat, 
10 pound weight that's not so bad but then once you extend it out like that and hold that that's gonna be a pretty tough workout i don't care who you are you can't hold that forever um compared to if you were to bring it close now the whole the whole reason that we're talking about that is that uh i want you to bring your hips closer or underneath the bar path in order to kind of utilize your joints in order to get to maximize everything because right now what you're doing is you're relying a lot on your on your back i think that's your strongest feature is your back, and that's that's probably why you might be a little bit more snapped up than you want to be because it, it is your strong point, but then once it starts to break down, then it starts to break down even more. Um, so with that being said, I, uh, your cue is to get your hips underneath you by squeezing your glutes. Um, you can picture your, your uh, what do you call it, your, your hips as like a glass of water. Right now, it's not very... Um, what do you call it? Here's your glass of water. It's spilling outside here, right? Compared to if we were to clear all this junk, and if we get that hip straight and squared away, then this glass of water will remain the same. So what I want you to do is to imagine cracking and squeezing your, uh, your glutes as if you're trying to crack a walnut or whatever peanut of your choice not penis of your choice, but peanut of your choice uh, into your, your glutes there and really squeeze. And then what that does is it helps put, position that hip a little bit underneath. And so if we were to have that hip underneath the bar, then we won't have that moment arm um, that's going to be so bad. It's not going to be crazy back there. And so therefore your back isn't going to be as fatigued and it's not going to get over, I don't know if I like using the word overtrained, but it's definitely going to help manage us to squat more and also, uh, have, you know, go for longevity. Anyways, that was it for this side. Um, you actually have some good hip mobility, which is pretty awesome. I'm glad that you have hip mobility because what I'm watching here is the crease of your hip is definitely below uh, the top of your knee. So if you ever wanted to uh, power lift and, you know, switch over to the dark side of, um, you know, uh, ammo sniffing ammonia and snapping and, and slapping each other while wearing singlets, then you can definitely do that uh, because you have that mobility. Um, you don't have too much of a butt wink, uh, which is surprising because usually when someone is like kind of uh, anterior pelvic tilted like like how you are basically what I said about the water spilling over to the side is that you'll notice that uh, people will once they reach at the very bottom they they will butt wink but for you it's it's very minor we can again address that a little bit better um, we can minimize that risk uh, again it's about risk versus reward right now you're not getting too much reward but more of the risk so again squeezing your glutes and getting that uh, that posterior pelvic tilt that's going to help out with your squat along with uh kind of help you out with the pain so let's move on to this angle here this is an interesting angle because this is where the magic happens at least for what i see so let's just draw a line or a better line that's straight down your crack as you can see all right you can kind of see a couple things so let me point out because I've, I've been doing this for a little bit and it's kind of kind of easier for me to see i'm still working on it. I'm, I'm still you know going to grad school trying to be a physical therapist so but i i've seen a lot of squats um just through video instagram all my clients of course and and just just anyways let's talk let's talk about you uh, so here you can see that your your left knee is extending pretty far out meaning that uh, you have some pretty good hip exit hip abduction um, and you're also leaning a little bit more toward the right hand side either one It's either one or the other. I would say you have really good hip abduction um, You tend to when there tends to be a hip shift It's either moving toward stability or away from pain. I know you said your left hand side has pain uh, But you also might have more stability on your right hand side uh, Especially I would say your quads the reason why your quads are going to be stronger than your on your right side than your left is that uh, the angle, the moment arm with your, your knee going in a sagittal direction is going to be a, a longer moment arm than it is on your left-hand side. Those are fancy words for you're using your right quad a lot more than you are on your left. So that needs to be addressed. And then so uh, another thing that's interesting here is that uh, you tend to, you, you have a little shift. Um, the shift is uh, more like a... Uh, it's not a shift, it's more a lateral flexion. I'm trying to minimize using those words, but 
It's like a right-sided side bend. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me draw a picture. Your torso is like this, whether you think it's not, but it is, because you can see that this le left glute, uh, or not glute knee, but it's, um, again, I'm trying to reduce the amount of medical jargon, but ischial tuberosity, your, your sit bone, is lower than the right-sided one. So that's telling me that this QL that tends to be a little bit tighter, tends to be more active. And so with that being said, with those two things, let's clear out all this. So, so let's name the things that are, that are happening. Your left side, your knee is extending, so strong hip abductor, with along a strong uh, right QL. And so those two things is basically, that's your, post, your right posterior uh, uh, oblique sling. Um, so the oblique sling is basically uh, the muscles here are going to also run into work with these muscles here. And let's go ahead and get fancy and, and change colors here. And these left-sided muscles here crisscross and use these muscles right over here. Um, so those are your slings. And so what that's telling me is that your you, you tend to be stronger on one side than the other. Um, so what we need to do is get your left um, posterior oblique sling stronger, which was the, that blue slide, that blue blue pieces right here, get them stronger. How we're going to do that is uh, do a couple of things. First, we'll start off with bird dog and get you stronger in that position. We'll probably do maybe twice as much on the left side than we are on the right side because so what that's going to do is we're going to utilize that left arm kicking up, that right leg kicking back, and again, we're just working all that all in the middle. So once we do that, um, we will kind of even out things. At least that's my idea. Again, all these things that I'm saying are not guaranteed. Um, these are just my opinion plus um, what tends to be the norm, or at least what I see. Uh, again, I can't guarantee anything with, uh, like, I know exactly what's going on because the body is pretty damn complicated, and it would be foolish to say that uh, we know exactly what's going on or, or you have a fix for everything. But these are my suggestion, and these are the reason why I'm programming you the way that I'm programming you. You'll see once I give you the, 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 the spreadsheet on the different type of exercises that I'm giving you. Um, so for the squat, we are going to address it with bird dogs and also um, some single leg deadlifts, which are the advanced version of bird dog, in my opinion, where we are focusing on that uh, left-sided posterior oblique sling. Um, so again, with that being said, we're also going to incorporate more um, glute need work, kind of, uh, I'm going to put some body weight clams on the right-hand side to help you extend and get that stronger, uh, to help uh, bring that knee out a little bit. Uh, again, uh, with that being said, we are also trying to make up with our left quads, uh, get that stronger and up to par with Bulgarian squats. So all these exercises I'm giving, they will all be in the spreadsheet because I will uh, write that down. Um, but we are just planning uh, we're just setting the trajectory. Once we set the trajectory, then we're, the end goal is going to be great. Um, at least that's what I see. So uh, those two things, <clears throat> along with uh, let's also do some unilateral farmer walks on the left-hand side. So the thing is, I'm, it's going to be weird that you're not training things uh, the same because, uh, you know, you want symmetry, but uh, you're, you aren't symmetric to begin with. So what I'm going to have you do is do farmer walks from – mostly concentrate on holding the weight on the left hand side that does two things that once we walk once we are on that one the stance leg on the right hand side where we are on uh, mid stance meaning fancy word for uh just just your left leg is in the air we have to use your glute meat in order for you not to uh, have your left side drop down and also what's going to happen is that your left ql uh your left side is also going to be strengthened and also help hike you up as well. So that's going to help out, um, get your, uh, get everything kind of evened out. And, and hopefully that's going to help you because like I said, what's happening is that you're, you're in this kind of position. I'm exaggerating, of course, but, uh, that is very, to in me, that in my mind, that's conducive with your sciatic pain, because if you have a herniated disc, uh, where do you think it's going to go? It's going to go this way, because if we're bending the spine this way, then we're pushing uh, the, provo the, the the little jelly donut that people love to talk about, um, yeah. which is kind of flawed and kind of not flawed, um, but we'll just use it for some simplistic um, uh, explanation here. 
uh, is that you're pushing it toward the left hand side, which does, which is pretty much what you're experiencing, at least in my opinion. Um, that's why you're getting symptoms on the left hand side uh, with all of your movements, especially when we start to load it. So once we get the, um, well, you follow Stuart McGill, right? So if we have your, uh, you know, stack of oranges, your your line of oranges uh, like that. We want to make sure that we have guide wires to help strengthen that um, or even pull it back more because if we're like this, then we need to pull even stronger uh, on this side and, and this side. You get what I'm saying? Like we need everything in alignment. Um, again, it's not always the fix, but it's a good place to start. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and continue on. I uh, went a little bit... Uh, crazy with the squats is already 15 minutes in and I'm just talking about squats um, so you can see here uh, pretty much exactly what I've been saying is that yeah your knee is lower here your knee is higher there also out more um, again these are all um, pretty much synonymous with what I'm saying and and and, and, and explaining to you um, so sorry I'm rambling a little bit I'm trying to hurry up but uh, I'm a little on the tired side uh, of course you know Four week old baby is kicking my kicking my ass right now, um, but uh, let's go and move on. So here we have another just the same thing. Uh, this pretty much shows you exactly what I was talking about, where your left side is higher, your right side is lower, using more quads, and also kind of um, it's, uh, angling to the side where you have that one side lower than the other, which is pretty much exactly what I said. So. And this kind of shows you a better idea of, um, you know, I hope you can see it now. I mean, I, I'm not sure if it, sometimes when people point it out, it's easier to see um, than looking at it yourself. See how much uh, I just grew a nice little box there. Look, look oh, wrong thing. Look what's inside the box, the top of the left knee. Look what's not inside the box, the, bo uh, the top of the right knee. Um, but let's go ahead and keep on moving. Uh, you know what really messed me up is this video right here. I, I'm glad I texted you because it was blowing my mind with this next video. This one was the exact opposite of everything I've seen. I'm like, why does front squats ruin everything compared to the other squats? Because this one now, um, yeah, I, it, it just seems like now you're left. Yeah, this one is the one you shot with the front facing camera. And now that that other side is sticking out more compared to the other. So let's let's just ignore this one and continue to move on with what I was saying. Uh, the bench press. Your bench press is such it's it's a bro bench press. Uh, I mean not too broish. It's pretty good. Um, what what I would say right here is two things. Um, we need to get that elbow directly underneath your your grip. So we can either do two things, which we can bring in your elbows, or we can bring out your grip. Um, I'm sure you heard me say that before in other videos of Coach's Eye, because uh, it tends to be a quite common one. Um, for you specifically, I think the best thing to do is get your triceps stronger. Um, I would incorporate a close grip floor press, because what's going to happen there is that it's going to force you to stay, remain tight, and to help uh, get that bar path. Because... The thing is, when you flare out your elbows too soon, like you do right here, you see your elbows flare out too soon because we want them underneath. What happens is that your bar path isn't ideal. What we want the bar path to be, uh, according to research, is kind of up toward your face, kind of like that, uh, like a J-hook pattern uh, compared to what we're doing is, uh, I think for you, you're, you're, you might just go straight up. Um, and if the thing that's important about having the triceps up, in line or but yeah the, the elbow in line with the wrist is that if we have it slightly behind then we can push that toward your face and up but if we have the elbows too high up if you apply force where's that bar going to go it's going to go more toward down your body which is not the right bar path we want um so again focusing on keeping your triceps tight um uh, keeping your lats tight and keeping your triceps in we're going to work them because what's happening is that your chest wants to take over compared to your triceps. So that's the kind of um, accessory work that we're going to work on along with bar path. Um, other than that, it's pretty damn, pretty damn good. 
but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not too worried. Uh, again, with with that being said, um, I'm just trying to look at anything else here. Uh, yeah, so what we can do is if we bring the uh, uh, the elbows in a little bit more with that uh, kind of closer grip, what I'm talking about is that um, it's going to help reduce the amount of elbow behind you or hyperextend your shoulder. When you're in a hyperextended position for the shoulder, it's going to be tougher for you to uh, create power because of the length tension curve of muscles. It's almost like if you're trying to, um, like a curl. It's hard. The curl is hardest at the very bottom of a bicep curl and the very top of a bicep curl. The reason for that is that uh, your sarcomeres are not um, uh, hooking on correctly, right? Uh, the, the, I'm sure you heard of the uh, uh, sliding filament theory. The filaments aren't all lined up in a nice, perfect position. They're either not uh, not lined up enough or they overlap too much um, with, again, those examples being the same thing. Same thing for here. If your elbow is underneath you and you're hyperextended in that shoulder position, then you're not going to ab be able to produce that much force in that shoulder because you're in that uh, compromised position. So, uh, again, if we were to get your triceps stronger and your lats tighter in order for you to tuck in those elbows, that's going to be the most conducive. We are hitting 21 minutes here. Now we're just talking about the deadlift. So let's go ahead and talk about your deadlift. Uh, deadlift's okay. It's pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't be too worried about it because, uh, or initially I wouldn't be too worried about it because you're still, uh, you're putting, the mechanics is still good, but now I know that because you told me that you have pain in the deadlift, then something's not adapting or something's not going on right. So in my opinion, um, it's decent, but of course we could get it better. So here's your bar path. Uh, let me, let me try to draw this here. All right. And so when you see how this first rep is probably your ugliest rep because you weren't patient with sumo. So first of all, once we start getting better and stronger, I would have you do pause deadlifts right off of the floor because your patience sucks. You're basically, your hips shoot up fast and it looks like you're even falling forward. Uh, and then you regain yourself, um, which, yeah, it's not efficient at all. So that's something down the line that we will work on. But for now, we work on your pain. Uh, because you can see here, let's talk about your... Um, your, your moment arms, basically, that's basic, that's that's where it comes down to you. So here's your hips, and here is the amount of moment arm. So that is the amount of work your back has to do. So if we can actually bring out your, your knees out more, and not a wider stance, but able for you to clear out, because for the sumo, I have two rules. The two rules is that I want you to have your hips as high as possible, but also as high over the bar as possible. So, so high as possible, that's, you're looking at up and down um, range of motion, and then hips close to the bar as possible, that's in the sagittal direction, meaning um, the front and back direction. I want your hips over the bar as much as possible. So um, that, those are the two rules. In order for you to do that more efficiently and get bigger weights, is that we have to work on your, your mobility for your hips and, and, and open them up a little bit more. Now it's gonna take time because that's, that's hard to do, uh, but that's going to be the most beneficial for you in the long run because now, once we bring those hips in, let's imagine that your 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 hips are like this, right? No, let's actually use some angle. Uh, let's see. So let's let's draw some angles. So right now your hip angle is that, right? But ideally, I would want your hip angle to be a little bit more like this so um, that's that's exaggerating a lot but uh, I'm just trying to draw a picture like literally and metaphorically of what we need you to do is open up those hips so then uh, what happens is that your spine tends to do really well with compression force compared to shearing sheared force so the shear force is that white line the, the, you're gonna have uh, using your your back a little bit more you have that shear force compared to uh, this compressive force which is uh, more upright. So the more upright we can get in your sumo, the better uh, that you can handle those uh, forces. Uh, again, the, your goal isn't moving the most amount of weight. I know you just want to be pain-free, so we are going to do some rehab as well. Since you follow Stuart McGill, you know that uh, he 
he likes a lot of anti-movement. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of anti-movement. I think that's the function, not the action of the spine, of the spine muscles, because the action of spine muscles is different than the function. The function, in my opinion, is to get uh, get things moving, get things uh, to, to uh, what do you call it, to, let's let this play. <laughs> I didn't even let it play. Let's let it play. Um, but uh, the, 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 the function of that is to get, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? We're trying to tra- transmit. Ah, wow. Whew, it's been a long day. Sorry. Uh, I woke up way too early today. So the function of the core muscles or trunk muscles is to transmit the force, uh, not create it. So, uh, again, uh, everything uh, – Stuart McGill says uh, the key to uh, having athletic performance is having uh, – what is it? He says – I'm blinking out a little bit. I know it's on the tip of my tongue where – um, proximal stability leads to distal performance. Yes, that is what I wanted to say. I am a little tired, but uh, I got the point across, is that if we control things in the midsection, then whatever we do, we can transmit the force outside outside that uh, uh, distal area. So um, as long as we control the midsection, then we are able to produce a force. Kind of like you can't shoot a cannon out of a canoe um, because you don't have that stability um, if you have your, if you're overpowered, then you're gonna hinder your performance because you can't shoot that cannon out of a canoe because then the canoe is like not even um, uh, it's not stable and you'll, you'll just fly off and you'll just break your damn canoe uh, compared to if you were to shoot it off of a you know a, was it aircraft carrier kind of thing. Anyways, uh, that is what I wanted to say. I think uh, with your deadlifts, we are concentrating on getting your hips higher. Um, and getting that hip mobility. So I would get some dumbbell lateral lunges to open up your hips. I'd also work on some Copenhagen planks because sometimes when your groin is a little tight, it's because it's not strong, and along with that, it's not going to be stable. Also, the cool thing about the carryover with the uh, Copenhagen planks, uh, hopefully, you're, hopefully you're familiar with them, um, but basically it's a plank using your groin muscles. Uh, is that you're also getting a nice added benefit of anti-side bending uh, movement, uh, basically a side plank. Um, so uh, with that being said, we are doing uh, deadlifts with your uh, with blocks for now and to, to reduce the amount of shear force and get you stronger. Because right here, I can even see, now you do, I, I respect that you are um, doing Romanian deadlifts, but if you can see some micro movement, if you see here, uh, if you look close, right here, your 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 back is is. I mean, you're doing pretty well with the hip hinging, but I would say there is still some movement with your back. Like from here, like you are more, uh, more more neutral, right? And then right here, uh, you tend to arch a little bit more. So from here to here. There's movement going into extension, and under load, that's going to be a little bit harder. Um, what I would cue you to do is if you do Romanian deadlifts, is that not to not to look up, because that's that's what happens is that the movement in your upper body is going to mimic the movement in your lower uh, your lower trunk, and so if you're looking up, then you're extending. You got to extend. Uh, it's just and then so yeah, it's just. You get what I'm saying? Hopefully that makes sense. I I, I don't. I'm I'm going past my lunch right now, so I'm a little tired as well. I keep saying that, but uh, you know, three hours is not normal. Um, but anyways, what I would cue you to do is to make sure that uh, that this this rod going through your spine is going also through your head. So I would actually have you look down and have this. The this part of your head right here, um, this part, uh, a little bit lower. So imagine having like a a tennis ball that you have to hold with your with your chin. That's gonna help have you uh, um, have a straighter uh, back. Because if I follow the your back, right, I shouldn't be able to chop your head. Anyways. Um, that's all I want to say. Hopefully that has been helpful. That is a good 30 minutes of me ranting and forgetting 
my words and forgetting what I needed to say. So I do apologize. This is not my best, uh, my best, um, wow, yeah, my best choice of words. I'm, I'm totally losing my words and trying to describe me losing words. Anyways, uh, hopefully that helps out. Train hard, train smart. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, again, I look forward to working with you and we'll get you pain free. And not only pain free, but even strong. Uh, stronger than you are now because um, even though you are jacked and tan, uh, you're moving some you're moving some girly weights, man. <laughs> Step it up, because <laughs> uh, you you know you, you gotta get stronger than that. You, you're am you're am coaching now. You gotta make me look good. All right, other than that, train hard, train smart. <laughs> Just trolling you. <laughs>